Okay, welcome back everyone. Let's get right into the stock market technical analysis. I've been away for about a week, so I wanna get into it. Um, if you guys were part of the private member group, I was constantly putting out trade ideas last week in the private member group, not putting out videos, but doing uh, the comments for the private members. So we had a couple winning trades last week. Uh, and um, in general, it was a good week. So if you guys are interested, join up on that private member group. I'm able to put out additional market insights, additional trade ideas there. It's five bucks a month. So for five bucks, you can get some additional trade insight. I think that's well worth it. Finally, if you haven't taken my stock market technical analysis course, it's priced affordable. I did not price it out of control. It's priced affordable. And that's going to give you the baseline for my trading strategy, my trading style, how to put up, put together high par probability trades, how to manage risk. Okay. Managing risk is, is a key element of trading. So all it's all in there. And then I give you guys a checklist on what to look for, for good quality trade setup. So check that out. Of course, link in the description below, as well as the private member group link. Join up if you're interested in more, uh, you know, getting more advanced in the markets. All right, let's get into it. Today, guys, we've got CPI coming out tomorrow, and then we have the Fed on Wednesday. This market, really for the last, since 2007, basically, has really been all dependent on the Fed. It's a Fed market. So what does the Fed do? Do they cut rates? Do they raise rates? Do they do QE? Do they Q, do QT? And it's basically just, that's what this market trades on. It's not earnings really. I mean, it, periodically the earnings come out and you get little pops, but in general, the major trend is all based on the Fed. So this week is an important week. And as such, um, you know, expect, expect high volatility, but expect a lot of whipsaw moves as well. So um, if you're not, you know, if, if you're too heavy into any one position and you can't take the heat, if it goes against you, I, you know, in my personal opinion, I think it makes sense to kind of lighten up. All right. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. So on triple Q's, um, we had, you know, bigger picture. And I do want to talk bigger picture on this video downtrend line here. All right. So you got down, down, and then there's another action. Now this one I overshot. So there's a potential, you know, we could look at maybe marking out like another trend line, something like that. And if you do that, then that sets triple Q's up for a move up to about, uh, it's about the 200 day moving average and it's about 302, 30150, somewhere right in there. So for me, that's about the max upside that I see in the market uh, it would be a move into that resistance line. If we're gonna do that, that would likely come on after the Fed or the CPI. So, uh, that's it. You know, that's where I see the upside and probably the most objective area to short is right about there. Uh, and it's sitting there at about 302 ish. And I think we continue lower after that. We are in a downtrend. We want to go with the prevailing trend. Um, you know, a spike, a rally into major resistance within the major trend would be an opportunity to short. So that's all I see on that one. For the short term, if I look at the hourly chart, we're kind of walking up this little trend line that they're marching up. It's just grinding higher today, really low volume and just really choppy price action. So it's not something I'm super interested in getting involved in right now. Uh, I'm just kind of sitting flat on triple Q's right now. Um, after pulling off last week in triple Q's, we took a long and a short, both were profitable. So as of right now, I'm looking just to sit flat and see where the market wants to go. If it wants to start to rally, maybe I'll take a long up to this you know, again, I pointed out those levels overhead, 302-ish, um, could take a long maybe up to there, but again, with CPI and then the Fed right after that, lots of volatility, and I don't exactly know <clears throat> where it's gonna go in the next two days, all right? We could pop, I would wanna short at 302, all right? I definitely wanna do that, so. That is it on triple Q's. If I look at the weekly chart, you look at the weekly chart on, um, triple Q's and I've got a couple trend lines, but the biggest pattern that I have, the most consistent pattern is this channel, this upward price channel. And this is really starting back in about 2009, nice consistent bull market channel, okay? And I've got lots of reactions and you can see basically on the triple Q's, this is that support area. So 
Uh, if we move down, we start to move down impulsively at a minimum, we should head down to this, uh, this trend line here. And if we get down there, I think we're gonna take out the lows and probably break the channel, okay? And at that point, you can pretty much say that Triple Q's is now officially in a bear market. If you don't, you know, price percentages, you know, a lot of the retail and on CNBC and stuff, they talk about if you're down 20%, you're in a bear market. And that that's true, you know, traditionally, but I prefer to just look at trends, all right? And this is a bull trend in Triple Q's on the weekly chart. That trend has not been broken. So start to head lower and start to break that, then that, that means the bull market is officially broken and we should, you know, enter into a prolonged bear market, all right? That's Triple Q's. And when I look at SPY, here's the SPY weekly chart. The price channel that I have on this one is coming off the 2009 lows. You can see we're just marching up. There's lots of reactions on this trend line. That one broke in 2018, okay? And then the Fed for the next couple of years pretty much threw every tool that they have to keep the bull market intact. So in 2018, they were raising rates. They cut rates here at the lows. Christmas Eve, I believe, they cut rates started doing QE again, so you, they pumped it up. Then COVID hit, boom, they did more QE, and they didn't have rates at that point, but there's tons of QE basically, pumped the market all the way back up. Now they're raising rates and there's no QE in sight, so um, the market's likely gonna just continue lower, all right? So I am fully anticipating that we head to take out these recent lows here, heading down to that 338 area, which is your pre-COVID highs, okay? That's still a target of mine. And as you can see on this weekly chart, this downward channel, we did pretty much hit that. So maybe we pop up um, on SPY again and hit that trend line again. After the CPI, we could maybe see another pop. I don't think this down this downward uh, um, <clears throat> trend is gonna be broken. And in fact, I'm looking for it to continue lower. All right, so that's it on S the, the S&P 500. Small caps weekly, you can see here, there's your all time highs. There's a resistance, resistance. Okay, clear rejection right there and we're just kind of trading lower. So in the short term, you know, this week, we could pop up and test this trend line again, but should likely get rejected. Um, so that's it, you know, I don't know whether we're gonna pop up and hit it or if we'll just fail, but I'd be more interested in uh, building a short position on rallies, you know, any kind of rally that I see this week, I'm looking to probably build a short position. Um, and, you know, again, going back to the cues, I talked about a potential long, but that's just a very short term trade, okay? If there's some momentum and it wants to run up to this 302, maybe you can jump on that. But for the longer swing tra trade, I'm really more interested in shorting, uh, you know, really here at three, uh, it's about 291.80, looking to probably add there, and then maybe up to 302. So anywhere in here, this is where I want to start shorting. Okay, right where we're at right now, I'm you know I'm kind of flat, but rallies into these levels, I'm looking to short. All right, about 291.80 up to 302, not really above that, because again, at the end of the day, anything can happen, and maybe the bear market is over. All right, there's no way to really tell. Uh, we'll have to know in hindsight, but I don't want to add on a position. If we continue to rally, I don't want to add as, as we start breaking resistance levels. Okay, I, I, in, in fact, we start breaking resistance levels, I'll be looking for areas to exit my short positions. So that is all I have on that one. Gold, uh, here's gold futures. You can see we're pretty much trading right here at resistance. So it's about 1809 or so. This is a weekly chart. You can see that was support. Then it broke down on a big weekly breakdown at, you know, break, breaking that support, back tested it, it was resistance, and here we are right now. So this is uh, not likely going anywhere until after the CPI and the Fed come out. Um, I'm kind of thinking we get a little pullback down to about 1740, uh, maybe after the CPI or the Fed, and then I'm looking to buy that dip, all right? So gold was in a downward price channel here, Big breakout candle. That breakout came with bullish divergence. Um, that you know, and again, this is a weekly chart. It shows cleanly on the daily, but we had bullish divergence breakout, and we've just you know, so a pullback would be uh, an area to buy because we do have that official breakout. So looking to buy the dips here, 
but it doesn't mean we can't dip down to that 1740 and see some of the miners come in a little bit. Commodities, here's this one I've been talking about as a long trade. Again, last week wasn't looking great, but not a reason to exit the position. I Someone asked me when I would look to maybe get out of the position and I was really looking at kind of the lows right down here. Um, you know, if we start taking out these lows, then that would be pretty bearish uh, other than just a brief little dip below it. So I was, you know, if we kept going lower and dip below it and started closing down here, then I'd probably look to exit by long. But until that happened, no reason to get out of the long position. It still looks good. Sure enough, today gapping up, up 6% today. So again, this just is, you know, this looks like it's ready to run, to be honest, like it's ready to take off to this 53 area next because owner resistance, anywhere from 53 uh, up to about 55, 54.75, somewhere in there. That's kind of the zone of resistance. And uh, yeah, so I still like this long. It still looks decent and it's profitable, although it's been, you know, it's been choppy. We've been consolidating. Um, if you entered the trade right here on the breakout of this bullish falling wedge and there's your breakout, it hasn't really gone anywhere, but it hasn't really gone down. And as of today, it's a profitable trade over that entry point. So I still like it, still like it as on the long side. Again, this is coming off a nice bullish divergence on the daily as well. See the divergence here, we're just moving up in momentum while price was drifting lower. Um, it's, it, it, it's a good setup. It's definitely a bullish constructive setup. So that's what I got on that one. And this one, cotton is very similar. Uh, so it's kind of doing the same thing. You can see breakout, we've just been consolidating. So I'm still looking for this to, to move up, although this is a pretty long consolidation period. Likely it's, you know, the Fed's probably gonna move all these markets. So uh, something to take into consideration. Uh, oil, so oil futures created this uh, bullish falling wedge pattern here on the, this is the hourly chart, short term stuff, but clear breakout looks like it's bull flagging so the projected target right now is um, up to let me kind of measure that out make sure I got that right it's basically yeah up to about 76.50 we'll call it um, and so yeah that's where that looks like oil's likely heading in the short term I don't know if it'll you know continue today or if it's going to happen on the CPI but that's what that looks like to me so probably a bounce in these oil stocks. And obviously we're seeing it already. Uh, in the private group, I talked about this OXY being a bounce. Uh, we did rally. So, you know, I pointed it out this morning right here and it rallied a couple percentage points, starting to give it back and maybe flag out. We'll see, um, you know, if it wants to continue higher, it could run up to this 65, uh, 95 area as the, as the target. So that's what I have on oil. Um, and then again, look at the bullish divergence on the hourly right there as well. So bullish falling wedge, bullish divergence breakout, little back test. It should continue to rally. It's constructive. But again, in my opinion, I'm not taking any heavy positions ahead of these CPI and Fed because they're going to move things around like crazy. Um, but, you know, you can just take the trade for what it's worth and, and uh, just manage the risk. First solar, so again, this just remains a good short trade in my mind. Uh, I've talked about this one for a while and we're, we're starting to resolve to the downside. Not a lot of price action in the last couple days, you can see because of the Fed and of CPI. So these are probably on hold, but bigger picture, whether we get a bounce after the Fed or not, um, we have this big bearish rising wedge pattern all right, and this is the daily chart. We have big bearish divergence. Okay, these divergences are really large uh, with a really large pattern. So it's projecting a pretty large move and I believe that moves to the downside. Um, and then we have a break of trend. You know, we started to break down. So maybe the Fed will come out, pump markets up and this will do a back test like that. That's possible. I suspect that would be an opportunity that's objective right there. You know, if you're going to rally into the back test, it's objective to, to either add to a short or initiate a short. No guarantees it's going to work out. But the divergences are telling me that it's a sell the rip stock. So if you rip, you want to short it into these into resistance. Again, that's uh, looking to me like we're going to continue lower 
And my target for this one is all the way down here at this gap fill, uh, down at about 78. It's gonna likely take months, maybe even a year to get down there, but that is the target. I do expect this to lose, from where we're at, that's about 49% uh, move to the downside. So I like it, still short this one. Let's look at some of these FANG stocks. I haven't talked about these in a while. I wanna go back to the weekly chart for Amazon and really just point out the bigger picture, all right? This is Amazon's entire history from their IPO. Pretty much been in a bull market um, since the IPO in 97. You can see on the weekly chart all the tags of support, okay? Held that bull market for a while. That bull market has now been broken. So there's your big sell signal. Uh, pretty much ending the bull market. Now again, in the beginning, when a big long bull market that's lasted you know 20 years uh, starts, or big bear market, then um, you have a lot of people that don't recognize it or believe it. So you get the rally back into resistance, and it failed. And sure enough, clearly downtrending. We're making lower highs and lower lows, and we've broken a very uh, definitive trend line. This is a bear market in Amazon that's likely gonna last for a while. And if Amazon's showing this in its chart, it's gonna be a drag, at least on the triple Qs, which should continue to drag on the other tech stocks, and they all kind of play to in together. So in general, you know, this is telling me that, okay, if Amazon's not going to go down anymore, it's likely not gonna go up much more either. So maybe it, what it wants to do is just kind of ride this like this and then maybe kind of grind lower and it could just kind of grind around i think the bias will be down okay make i want to make that clear but it could just kind of grind around for a while and go nowhere all right and that's very possible uh well meanwhile inflation continues to run hot i do think inflation even though it's coming down a little bit it, it's only coming down it's the rate in which it's increasing so if last year inflation was increasing at 10 percent this year it's increasing at seven, eight percent. So it is still increasing. Inflation is still increasing just at a slowing rate. Okay, and that makes sense. It just is a slowing rate of inflation. So I think that will probably continue, that will continue to slow. Doesn't mean that we're going to go into negative, you know, deflation uh, unless we start to see the market really start to collapse. Um, the, the rate of inflation is merely slowing. It is not actually uh, it is not, not you know, prices aren't getting cheaper. Let's put it that way. Prices are getting more expensive at a slower pace. Uh, and a lot of that has to do with uh, the gas. And I know they're rating the uh, strategic oil reserves for to, to keep gas prices down. So that can only go on for so long. And then we're likely going to see the gas prices continuing to rise. Apple. Apple is basically a proxy to the S&P 500 and the triple Qs for, for the most part. It's just such a heavily weighted uh, stock within those indices. Um, Apple's yeah, just grinding around. Apple to the downside, it would be bearish if it starts to break. And this is a weekly chart, but 138.21, a weekly break below 138.21, and a definitive break, not just a you know slight undercut. A weekly close below that level is going to be bearish and that's likely going to set Apple up for a move down to about 106. Okay. 106. If I roll out, that's the price channel. This is the bull market Apple's been in since about 2010. And you can see on the weekly chart, nice, uh, strong rally. The fed pumped Apple way up here. I think at the end of the day, this is where I think Apple's going. And I think it's going to do it in kind of two, two legs. So I think we're heading down to this trend line here, probably get a bounce there. But at the end of the day, or ultimately, I still think we're heading down to the bottom of this price channel. Uh, and right now, that's about 78 or so. And even if we do that, Apple would still be in a bull market, at least from a trending perspective. The chart would still be constructive. So unless you break this, you know, we could come down here, bounce, come down here, and then just continue the bullish trend. So something to look at. You know, and, and that might very well happen. And, you know, the market might continue to be in a bear market while Apple kind of holds this trend. And then it goes on to break the trend in the future, maybe after a strong bear market rally that lasts a while. So anything's possible. Again, we're walking right now. We're just zeroing in on 
some of these levels. 138, uh, impulsive weekly close below that should prove to be uh, a should prove to be a sell signal for a move down to the lower trend lines. We'll obviously hone it down to the shorter time frames, the daily and the hourly to get more accurate trade entries, but uh, just trying to point out the bigger picture here. Guys, that's really all I have to talk about. There's just not a whole lot going on in the markets right now, so <clears throat> I tried to point out some of the bigger picture stuff. If you guys are finding value in the content, drop me a thumbs up, check out the trading course, join the private member group. It's all there for your benefit. It's priced affordable, so I think there's great value there. Check it out, link in the description of this video and many of my other videos below. Catch you on the next one.